This is the Ask a Photographer podcast, answering your photography-related questions about general photography, workflow, editing, business, and marketing. To submit a question, go to beblino.com forward slash ask. Hello, and thank you for listening. My name is Mike, and I'm from beblino.com. Today, we're going away from the usual schedule of listener-submitted questions, and we're just going to talk about customer service for a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm seeing a growing amount of people contacting me saying that they're glad that uh, I finally did answer the inquiry because the other photographers that they've spoken to never got back to them. And that's either by email or even by uh, by phone, which I find that, uh, that just mind-blowing because, you know, we all know how hard it is to get leads uh, good quality leads, that is. So, you know, uh, I, I just, I feel very bad for um, for this customer that called me last week. You know, she said that uh, she spent two to three days trying to contact a photographer for her wedding. Look, I don't know the circumstances of, of the other photographers and, you know, it could have been their day off, they could have been shooting elsewhere, you know, who knows. But the fact that Nobody got back to after almost three days is just, uh, I think, is, is actually appalling and gives us photographers a bad name. I, I think that if we can just talk about customer service today and just cover the basics of, well, setting expectations, you know, from my idea of photography workflow is from the moment you interact with a customer to the moment you deliver the final product. If we can just look at how customers contact us, and you know, our websites are the, probably one of the most common way that uh, we will uh, receive leads. And I think that uh, what we could potentially be doing is actually setting the expectations of our customers, and by doing so, we're letting them know that you know we're going to get back to them uh, after one or two days, and for them not to not to worry. So what I tend to do is actually put a little, uh, well, a couple of lines, actually, um, along lines of, please fill out the below form, and I will be in contact within 24 hours. If you wish to speak to me sooner, you can contact me uh, via, via phone. This does two things. One, for the people that aren't in a rush, they're, they're more than welcome to use email, and they will know that I will get back to them uh, within 24 hours. If it's something a little bit more urgent, you know there's they've left you know, their, their session's a little bit late and they have a bit of a deadline, which has happened many times. It's uh, it's nice to actually have your mobile phone there so they can contact you quickly. So, you know, setting expectations is is one, one area that we can um, start with. Having templates that when our prospective clients call us, we have templates that we can use over and over again. And, you know, if someone contacts us via email, and you know they're just asking about pricing or, or availability. Well, there's no reason why we can't have a little template on our phone, and it could apply to several things. You know, I've I've got uh, I think up to about twenty something um, uh, templates for different parts of the process of of interacting with customers. You know, there's, there's a, a template there for if if I'm booked. You know, they um, letting them know who um, I'm not available and who else they can contact, or if I am booked, uh, where my prices start. You know, so that that type of thing. And we all have mobile phones, smartphones. You know, we can um, use the existing text pad uh, that's um, that comes standard with the iPhone or, or Android devices, or we could you know use something a little bit more sophisticated that uh, you know software that allows us to sync between devices. So it, I personally like to use the most simplest form of just a simple text file. One document has all my uh, templates and it's, you know, it served me quite well. Now, having said that in regards to templates, you should always personalize a template. It's good to have a base, you know, for about 50% to even 60% of, of the job done there, you know, your signature and, you know, greetings and, and, and you know, just general information. And then you should fine tune it. You know, if someone goes to the trouble of explaining a little bit about what they want, you know, you can add that to the email so they can see that oh, this person's actually read my my um, inquiry and and they're responding accordingly. So it it's, you know shows a little bit of professionalism there, and um, I think that goes a long way. And just remember, customer service is everything. You know, we we entered this game, well, not game, but we entered the industry as photographers because you know we we enjoy 
the the creativeness of, of being a photographer. Otherwise, you know, we would have just gotten a, a regular nine to five desk job. When we're a small business, well, we basically wear multiple hats. You know, we do our customer service, we we do our photographing, of course, we do our editing. And if you can't manage this or, or you're not very good at it, there's no reason why you can't ask somebody else to help you. There are virtual assistants that you can contact and they can do your emails for you. You know, they can do your editing, they can do um, all sorts of things. They, even, they can even do your photographing if, if that's what you really want. But, you know, for, for this situation, you can, you know, it is very simple to meet people's expectations as long as you set boundaries and guidelines of, of how you operate. People understand just like when you enter a store. You know, you expect to be greeted, you expect to be shown and explained about a product. Well, the same thing should apply for your business, even if it's a side business. If you want to grow it or even get extra money, you should be treating it like a business, as if it was your main income. Okay, so remember, customer service first. Photography is is always up there in, in regards to importance, but you win customers with your um, customer service. They will rave about you, you know, um, Photos, anybody can take photos, but you know, if you can treat your customers as gold, it will go a long way for them, especially when they go to refer you to other people. We're so fixated with social media that you know, we're worrying about people's posting and, or even posting our own photos from our sessions. Just take five minutes, even on a day off, especially when we've got templates, we can simply copy and paste and be done and dusted within like five, ten minutes and potentially win a customer and one more job and one more thousands of dollars. Um, I think it's just very, very simple, the step we can take. And if you are worried about people thinking that you work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, well, there are softwares such as I, Boomerang for um, Gmail that you can uh, write up your emails and, and get it to send at a later time. Outlook um, does a similar thing, but you need to be logged into Outlook for that to work. Uh, you could potentially create a draft and then uh, put yourself as a reminder to send that email like uh, 9 o'clock the next morning if, if that's what you're worried about. I wrote an article about uh, starting a new photography business and one of the points being there was customer service. So I, I suggest everybody reads um, that document if you're new to business and we, as a photographer um, as it gives you some pretty good tips there including customer service. So I'll link that in the show notes. So. I'm hoping that this doesn't come across as a, as a rant, but more about, you know, kind of helping everybody pick up our game. You know, I know that when I first started um, 12 or so years ago, it was very different for me as well. You know, I never, uh, well, I did get back to people, but, you know, um, just what I wrote back to them was uh, was not consistent. And, you know, by using little tricks like templates and, and making sure that I'm letting people know when I will be getting back to them. You know, I never use an autoresponder because it's one of those things that could easily be forgotten. And I know that, you know, you, you set it to say that you're on leave and next, you know, three months down the track, it's still sending out when um, yeah, you don't want it to. So don't use autoresponders either. That's something I probably should have mentioned earlier. I, I think that if you're going to send something back to a person, make sure it's um, it's you personally and not an autoresponder saying you'll contact them within 24 hours, which, you know, what's the point of sending it if you're going to do that anyway? So, yeah, I hope it doesn't come across as a rant, and I just hope that photographers as a general, you know, we're, we're creative people, and I think we don't think about customer service, but, you know, when we go shopping, we demand it. So, you know, I, I, I just hope... That this trend of people not getting back to customers is, is you know, it's one of those things because people are being too busy uh, photographing and they didn't have time as opposed to just being lazy and rather putting it aside and thinking that it doesn't, ex uh, it doesn't help their business. So thanks for listening. If you have a question that you'd like featured on the show, go to biblino.com forward slash ask to submit your question i'd love to hear what you think of the show by going to itunes or stitcher and giving me a review and a rating and don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications of new episodes thanks for listening until next time get out and take more photos oh look it's a cat in front of a sunset <laughs>